All right. Well, that was that was a little annoying. Um, I think we're back. Yeah, hold on one second. Um, I'm thinking we're back. Yeah, so at some point I'm just going to need a separate streaming machine because my my computer can't handle like running some of our more intensive stream uh sorry uh our more intensive scenes um and stream them at the same time right it's like on their own the scene runs fine like on my end but uh obs kind of takes too long to encode the video so that was the issue there anyway um we're not working on that level right now anyway i was just kind of like fiddle farting about in it anyway welcome back to the stream we are going to be picking up where we left off last time uh we're working on this like dungeon level right here it's going to be kind of an open open format where uh you can kind of pick and choose where you want to go right um i'm thinking I'm gonna start branching out over this way. I am really digging this tower room, but um, I think this is something we can probably come back to. Mm -mm -mm. Let's see. Yeah, I was building this little room here last. How's the stream quality? Is it coming through okay? Clear? Crisp? No issues? I know we just had a crash there, but, um... Read just some settings. It's honestly... That, it's, it's that guy's fault. Oh my gosh! I got legit spooked right there. Okay. Stream's looking good again. Yeah, I think it's mostly just that level is, like, super, super heavy on the uh, GPU since it's like a giant open world area and it hasn't been optimized at all yet so if I ever go and work on that scene on stream I'll probably need a second computer to be able to to do that which is something I'm looking into right now actually because my my old uh, RTX 2080 is like pretty decent but when it comes to um, doing some heavier scenes and streaming at the same time and running music and billion other things it kind of craps out on me all right so let's see we were left off over here this guy just hanging out uh, I eventually like want to pull this over into a almost like a mini boss arena but my my only concern is right now it's like this is a lot of stairs to make a player run through right and uh people have a tendency to not be too happy when they like have to climb an area and then they accidentally fall down um and i I think that's just gonna be an issue. Why are computers so bad? How can anyone take something like the Matrix seriously when we can't even screen share reliably? Yeah, dude, I don't know. It's like I think a big problem is just like m most nobody, most nobody, most everybody uh, has no idea how computers work, right? Nice. Alright, I got one of the gun from this guy. Ah, oh, no, he's a regular guy. But yeah, it's computers are just kind of jank, right? I mean, it makes me think about just like how just random things can affect uh, computers too, right? Like there was that, um, I think it was a Super Mario 64 um, 
playthrough where they were doing like a speed run and there was like a solar flare or something of some kind and basically like a particle from that like wave happened to like intersect with the console in just the right way where it flipped a value and allowed a guy to like clip through a wall and completely break the speed running record um i don't know it's it was so crazy um hold on i want to like pull that up because what's that sun closes How an ionizing particle from outer space helped a Mario speedrunner save time. Yeah, that's crazy. Like, why why would something like that affect a computer? I don't know. I don't know anything about computers. Wow, that got really loud really quick. Hold on. Um, excuse me? Well, that's a problem. That's very, very loud. Is the stream too loud for y'all now? What is going on? Oh my gosh, man. Speaking of computers like losing control. Dude, what on earth? <laughs> y'all can't see this right now but like my audio is like just jittering like crazy and i have no idea what's causing it let me like unplug my mic and plug it back in Dude, right? <laughs> it's it's the it's the ionizing low fi particle. Something's like messing with this. It was the Xbox controller. Dude, what? Speaking of like computers just like not making any sense, I like conjured some bad juju the moment I like start talking crap about computers, just how they don't work. My computer just decides to just like start gunking up everything, right? Uh, let's see. It's still, it's still doing it. Man. Computers are, <laughs> computers are just so jank, dude. Especially mine. Well, Will wasn't having very good luck last time either. He ended up, like, picking up his coffee mug and then, like, Immediately, the bottom of the cup just like landed on the keyboard and like dropped some coffee into it. <sighs> Unlucky. Unlucky. Anyway, um, I think it's back to normal. I can't say for sure because uh, any second now it could just give out on me. To yeah. <laughs> Ionizing ping pong coffee particles, total devastation. Yeah, dude, computers are just. Whoa. I didn't even know I could jump off of them. Oh, man, it's like getting weird again. Something about like. So strange. So, so strange. It's like my. All of a sudden, like, I'll, like, lose, like, all input, and it'll get, like, super laggy, like, floaty, and then everything else, like, starts moving about. Very weird. Um, I don't know. I'll, I'll figure this out at some point. What is it with us and, like, technical difficulties just cropping up out of nowhere? All right. You're sorry for insulating. Oh, sorry. Oh my gosh, I can't even talk. You're sorry for insulting the Matrix. Yeah, you should be. 
Because, uh... Apparently you hurt its feelings, and, uh... They're getting ready to pull the feeding tubes out. And, I mean, we gotta... We gotta shape up, because... You know, we're a we're angering the computer gods. All right. Um, what are we doing? Right. I was gonna build like a pathway um, from over here to up here because currently there's like a little bridge shortcut, but it doesn't go anywhere. Right. I wonder if that should just go to a different area. Like if that should be a um. Back in, because it's like I want I want this level to be like interconnected and like have all these like different pathways and you can play like forwards and backwards. But the problem is when you start giving players too many choices, um, they end up getting uh, what you call like uh, choice paralysis, where they just have no idea where to go or what to do. And that is no good. Oh, you know what? I bet it was my keyboard. See, my keyboard has like a little volume knob on it that like can be adjusted. All right. Um. I guess I'll just start with like a regular staircase, right? This is cool, but I might end up taking it out because it's going. Like, it's just gonna be a little confusing, right? Like, they'll, they'll go up and they'll see this, like, path or over here and it doesn't really go anywhere. Oh, you know what? This could just be, like, a room that I cut off, right? That... Oh, yeah, that, that's fine. Because, like, as long as the dead-end path doesn't, like, go too, too far, it's not really a problem. Um... Oh, I need to turn that rotation snap on. Um, am I using a half wall there? I guess I am. Hmm. I'm gonna do a barricade right there. Oop. Snap off. I need like an actual window set at some point. That's fine for now. Oh my gosh. Oh, you still... Oh, the... <laughs> I forget I haven't baked the uh, nav mesh. That guy can't follow me. You know what? I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Um... Just because... I want to see if this guy can like follow me up the stairs. Okay. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. He's doing what he's supposed to, and I'm really proud of him for it. Oh, come on. Can I get him? He like dashes away anytime I get close. I think that's a behavior we should probably change. Like if you're in the air and um, you're next to them, they, I don't think they should move away for like a second or two, right? Cause like, 
making players like have a chance of like jumping in the air and like punching yeah like yeah like right there uh them darting away doesn't feel as good as if i had like been able to punch them and i get that's like their ground behavior and they should be like difficult to hit but i feel like if you're getting like a mid-air jump shot at them Be more possible hey welcome to the stream how's it going uh yeah it's <laughs> it's going okay we were having some technical difficulties there for a little bit where uh we were talking about uh ionizing particles affecting uh super mario speed runs and then all of a sudden my computer went haywire and started moving things on its own so i think uh I think the Matrix heard us and started like messing with us. But yeah, welcome to the stream. We're uh, kind of picking up where we left off last time. Um, getting ready to build a staircase up this like level here. Uh, just for variety's sake though, I think I'm actually going to leave this for now and we're gonna break off and uh, start making like a little terrarium area. Cause I think that could be kind of cool. Nice brush size, give it some tool strength. Now we want we want this really cranked up. Oh no, I don't want that. I don't want the strength that high. I don't want it moving the window. Man, just no end to the technical difficulties today. One of these days I'll get a computer the babes. Today was the last day of the Game Maker's Toolkit um, Game Jam. I just remembered that. And um, so the theme of that that Game Jam is supposed to be, uh, what is it? Uh, made to scale, set to scale. So anything having to do with like, you know, um, scaling things, right? of any kind um and it's like a loose theme so you know you can kind of like mess around with it but i'm interested to see what a lot of people are going to be making with that because um i mean people are just crazy creative right like it's like to me thinking of a game like set to scale is like you're gonna have some sort of like shrinking or stretching mechanics but I mean, it's such a loose interpretation that um, so many different people could have so many different interpretations of it. And I think there's going to be some pretty cool stuff coming out of it. And honestly, like some of the best games start off as like game jam games. Um, we've been following a uh, guy on Twitter, kind of talking back and forth occasionally. Um, he's making a game called Arctic Egg. And uh, I think that started as a game jam game. And basically the premise is uh, it's like this like PS1, PS2 style game where you're like trying to like cook an egg in like an Arctic environment. And the handling is like purposely bad. So it's like hard to like balance the egg. And they just keep throwing crap on it. And it's like difficult to maneuver and everything. But it was like a really cool concept. And uh, I think... A lot of that guy's games, uh, they felt very game jammy, whereas like, they might not have been game jam games, but it's like that same kind of premise where it's like, okay, here's like a small little idea, and uh, I'm gonna like mess around with this idea and then take it to its like apex, right? I always think that's like a really cool way to like, kind of design a game. We've done, Actually, to, um, now that I think about it, we got started, um, Skunk Ape got started as a uh, game jam 
company, right? Like we had never made a game before. And uh, the first game we ever made was a game called Sky Pirates. And um, it was just not good, right? I mean, it was kind of jank, but conceptually it was interesting. You know, it was just these like, um, these ships with balloons and you could like shoot at them and like board the other ship and like attack them. But um, that's kind of how we got started in like the Unity engine. That was like our first like game venture outside of um, modding Fallout. So technically we got started as like a game jam company. Um, and then we did one other game jam where we made this like, <laughs> we made this like entire little game and uh, we didn't publish it in time to like have it enter into the game jam. It was a game called Nighty Night uh, because the premise of the uh, game jam was like knights, and uh, because we only made first-person shooters, this game Nighty Night, you would throw your swords at, at enemies, and they would like just—they were like peasants, like like crawling on the ground, doing like barrel rolls, and just like really, really weird and creepy animations. It's just like a little wave defense game. I kind of wish we still had like the executable of that lying around because it was it was kind of funny. You can make eggs with bacon and cigarettes ew <laughs> oh man yeah yeah i'm sure there's like some gnarly stuff you can uh kind of cook up an arctic egg i wonder if like the customers are like actually like asking for that though also like eggs with bacon and cigarettes uh is like i'm pretty sure that's just like the average like russian breakfast though so like if it's set in Siberia, you know, that might be what people are requesting, you know. Breakfast of champ yeah, you're absolutely right. It's the breakfast of champions. That's uh that's how you grow to be big strong boy. You gotta you gotta eat all your uh, bacon and cigarettes for breakfast if you wanna get those uh those nice gains. Alright. Let's bust it wide open I think I'm gonna like open this this whole area up cuz I want players to go this way actually you know what I might even like branch it open more so see my problem right now um, is I don't have a good like hub zone to like connect all the different areas, right? Yeah, Auden, uh, did you ever get your computer working? I know you're having some trouble with it. Um, right, no, 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 you, you had mentioned that um, one of the main issues was uh, you had accidentally like like locked blender at like 24 frames a second instead of 60 which uh, I have a thousand percent done that right no but I've been using my dad's a lot right 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 that was a different issue entirely well, hey as long as you're able to like still work on the game to run unreal with it but your dad's laptop can't handle it oh man that's rough yeah unreal is kind of bloated um for lower end systems it's a very very heavy engine it does a lot of cool stuff but you kind of need that like initial power up front i mean hey like earlier on the stream um i wasn't really able to run some of my scenes and stream at the same time which you know, that's not the same, but it's just heavy. Yeah, yeah, you can just keep making characters in Blender and animations and stuff, and um, all that work can be transferred over later. I mean, 
there's there's so much stuff that goes into game dev that uh, not having like a super powerful computer if you have a computer at all you can kind of keep uh, the project moving for a little bit right man I don't even want to think about like the computer I started out with I started out with um, it's like a Toshiba laptop from like 2007 it was like a 19 inch laptop and uh, this is back when all of Skunk Ape Interactive, there was four of us, um, we were working out of uh, a laundry room uh, that was probably about maybe 14 by 14 square feet. Like it was not, not a lot of room for four dudes. Uh, and I worked in a bean bag with a laptop on my uh, legs, and I was using a beer crate as a mouse pad. And uh, <laughs> that laptop always sounded like it was like a, a jet taking off, and it was like singeing my legs through my jeans. It was so bad. You already made three character models. Oh, dude, nice. Yeah, keep it rolling, man. Stick with it. We just this. Oh, ew, that's not that's not very good design, right? Gotta call myself out here real quick, but um, having a player like move up a level and then come around a corner and then immediately move down a level doesn't. It feels like they're you're, you're getting jerked around a little bit, right? already had them uploaded on our station nice dude yeah you should um you should join our discord man like uh people are always like showing off stuff they're like working on or just talk about it or whatever i'm thinking we should probably start like a like a separate section in our discord for like, like a community hub and just like projects and stuff that people are working on just because it's like always really cool to see like what other devs are up to or just like even if you're not a dev if you're just like working on anything artistic at all or anything you're like passionate about i'm always like up to see like what people are like passionate about right because uh there's a lot of people out there who just don't really care about anything um and you know that's if you don't have like something you're trying to work on that's fine but it's always cool to like see someone who's like got something they're like super dedicated to right because it's uh it's a little uncommon hmm Gotta do a big think here, I don't know. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That was weird. I lost y'all for a second. stream uh running okay i know i'm having some uh like buffer issues tonight my internet's kind of been shaky today because of the storm it's been like dropping in and out so yeah ah, dang i here's the thing i don't even know if like lowering the quality will help um because it's it's not like a like a bandwidth problem it's like an actual like dropping connection problem um Something about like the storm has like really messed up my internet, so. Okay, well, if it looks fine now, I'll kind of leave it as is. Um, 
I had the uh, Twitch window open too, so it was like probably trying to like render the stream back to me. So I'll close that and just like have the chat running. Let's see. What was I doing? Yeah, man, I get so easily distracted. Um, right. So as much as like I like this like original area, I think we're going to go ahead and gut it, right? And again, this is like something I was talking about before where level design is like so amorphous. Um, things change very, very rapidly. Like you'll have an idea and then, you know, sometimes it won't work out. Like it doesn't feel good when you play it. Um, kind of what I wanted to do is, uh, essentially build like a, a proper hub area to connect all these different areas, right? So there's already kind of an issue where this bit is like further back. Um, but if I can make it wrap back around from a hub area, we should be fine. I don't know if you all can hear that, but uh, someone is mowing outside my window and it is 848 right where I am right now. It is like dark outside. So I don't know what that's all about. Um, maybe it's not mowing. Maybe it's, uh, oh, you know what? It might be his na my neighbor like working on his uh, Harley. But still, it's like nine o'clock at night. Why are you? Why, why are you cranking your hog? <laughs> uh, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop that sentence there. <laughs> that could be taken out of context. <laughs> yeah, the weather does that a lot. Had some big thunderstorms here in Texas. Even I had to run out there to grab a chicken before the storm made them fly away. Oh, wow. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we're over here in Florida, so we're, like, not too far off from you. So we're getting, like, a lot of bands from, like, those tropical storms and stuff lately. You gotta be careful. You gotta, you gotta bend down those hatches for those chickens. Let's see. Um... I really like this like path here, but and as much as I liked it being a secret path earlier, it ended up like becoming more of an area, and it's kind of it's kind of too big to be a uh, secret passage, right? Uh, the main issue is like it's such a long track to like snake your way down here and then back over and then all the way up these stairs to like make this worth it you'd have to put like something very interesting at the end um, and if it's a mini boss arena that'd probably be fine but uh, we don't really have anything at the moment that could like serve as a mini boss That was like a few months ago and I looked at the weather report and I was right in the middle of it. Oh man, yeah. Yeah. Weather be crazy, man. So <laughs> so you had to like go get your chickens like before the storm blew them away? Do you like do you like live on a farm or do you just happen to have a couple chickens cuz uh you know, growing up I used to have some chickens. Um funny enough, they were actually uh indoor chickens and uh we kept them in our sunroom um because like when my dad built our house he like built a sunroom and we ended up basically never using it because all the furniture in there was like wicker and like super uncomfortable um and like the living room was like right in front of it it's like why would i sit on like crappy uncomfortable wicker furniture when there's like a nice sofa and a tv right, right there um so 
we ended up getting two chickens and we kept them indoors and we named them Peep and Repeep. Which, again, super stupid, but kind of funny. And um, when they got too big to keep inside because they wanted to, like, fly around and poop on everything, uh, we sent them away to the farm. And I don't mean that as in, like, you know, they got killed or anything. They like, We, like, actually uh, sent them away to a farm. And they lived out their very happy chicken lives laying lots of eggs and uh, eating lots of bugs. Definitely kind of a weird pet to just randomly like have indoors though. It's like something I completely forget about because it's just like, why would we do that? It's like we were in a, just a, a general like suburban neighborhood. Uh, and it's just like, yeah, let's just have indoor chickens. For no reason, like we don't want the eggs. It's just, yep, we want we want some chickens. Anyway, mm -mm. this is feeling a little bit better already. It could be like a little, not a secret room, but like a little like gum cache or something. Man, I need to make like a list of props at some point because we're going to have to go back through and like set dress all this stuff, swap out all like walls and everything. Um, also, I just need to make more pieces in general, right? Like 45 degree angles are fantastic but um after a while they get uh, a little old right oh all this needs to be yeah speaking of like swapping out materials uh roof nice yeah like just even making like more variety of like materials and stuff You live in the middle of nowhere and it's not a farm, it's a house with a chicken coop outside. Okay, I gotcha. Yeah, y'all keep them for like the eggs and stuff. My uncle does the same thing. He like kind of lives out in the middle of nowhere and he keeps like a coop full of chickens and has his like own little like garden and stuff, but it's by no means a farm. He just keeps them because uh, for one, he likes taking care of chickens uh, and two, Gets free eggs. You know who does love free eggs, especially with uh, egg prices being absolutely ridiculous, right? If you're trying to get like some gym gains, get swole, do some do some working out. Uh, eggs are like a great source of protein, but they're like they're so expensive. It's like they go up every year. Their, uh, their pricing uh, is increasing egg exponentially. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. It was right there, guys. I couldn't. <laughs> I couldn't help myself. Yeah, start your. Yeah, start your groaning. I hear you. I hear you in the comments. I hear you in the chat. Listen, the jokes are gonna get way worse. The longer we stream, the less material we're gonna have. Well, at least in terms of jokes. Hopefully, uh, the longer we stream, the more material we have, at least in terms of textured materials. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, that one's barely a joke. I'm sorry. All right. Um. I think it's time we build our little terrarium. <laughs> hey, I make puns too. Well, you're in you're in good company.
we are all about making terrible jokes and uh, less terrible games, but <laughs> not very often. Yeah, that's if you're not making puns very often, that's probably a good sign that you have a healthy mind and uh, a decent sense of self-control. I, on the other hand, uh, am too far gone. Nope. That's about right. We'll flatten this whole area out. Yeah, I'm thinking uh, what this like little area is going to be here is um, essentially like not like a botany lab, but kind of like a terrarium where they like are. Uh, just observing like the grub behaviors because I'm thinking like the Soviet Union at some point was like looking into um, like utilize the grubs in like whatever way they could right whether it be for like harvesting them for their meat or uh, potentially domesticating them and using them as like you know like frontline soldiers or like dogs uh, but it's gonna be like that classic, like, uh, Resident Evil thing, where it's just like, oh man, we, 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 we got these, like, things to experiment on, and, uh, you know, we just kept torturing them, and prodding them, and poking them, and surely nothing will go wrong, as long as they don't escape this, like, th very flimsily built container, and then, you know, obviously they end up breaking out, and tearing the whole place apart. Most of the jokes you make are sarcastic jokes. Or you say the opposite of what someone would normally say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everyone's got their like own brand of humor, right? Like mine kind of flip-flops between just mediocre like dad jokes and like just the most obscene thing you've ever heard. Um, not in terms of, like, profanity, but, like, it's like the joke is just, like, not very good. Uh, and I'm more entertained just by, like, the general reaction of people than, like, the joke actually being funny. And sometimes I, like, actually say something funny, but, you know. It's like a it's like a war of attrition, right? Like eventually, eventually, like you're gonna hit your mark. But man, if you're not just gonna whittle everyone down around you while doing it. Okay, this I think is like a pretty appropriate area for like a small little like grub fighting arena. Um, let's go ahead and paint it a different color though. I'm thinking maybe I'll do some black sand here. That could be good. Hmm. Oh, it's not doing a um, subtractive blend. I need to. There we go. Why? What's going on here? The sand is like still showing through it. Oh, I know why. Hold on. It's because the brush fall off. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I don't want it that much, but. Yeah. Sometimes like the train sculptor will do like do something weird. I'm like, what is, what's going on? And then uh, the problem and the weirdness is actually just me being stupid, right? Like not paying attention. Um, this texture needs to be like swapped out and replaced at some point, but um, for our purposes, I think it's going to be like a like a fine placeholder, right? Because the general tone is like I want it to be like almost like volcanic sand, right? 
right now it's got like a tinge of like red to it because mostly it's used with um, this like grass, right? Oh. Um, there. Wow, that's bright. Um. <laughs> People messaging me. Oh no. All my stuff. Okay, it's back. That's right, there's not actually a huge difference in the coloring of those. It's just the tiling is different. Okay. Let's... Is this the rock base? Is that like... Oh, no, that's not what I want. Make a joke or something funny I like to make weird enemies voice. Yeah, yeah. I gotcha. So do you do uh do you have like voice acting and stuff in your game? Because that's uh that's something we've kind of been like flip flopping on as we develop McSpace Biff. Um it's like one of those things that we we wanna do it, but the amount of work and effort it is to like not only write all the voice lines for a character but to then act them and then you know like match animation and everything and equalize them and it's just kind of a lot um especially with like our type of game where there's like quests and stuff um so there's like a lot of potential um dialogue options. Not yet, but you have your voices basically. Okay, cool. Are they like right now? Is it like more just like basic, just like grunts and just like, oh, ah, ah, like that kind of thing? Or is it like, uh, do they actually like say stuff? Because we'll, we'll probably have, um, I mean, like, make space before like make, like, you know, like, hurt noises if he, like, falls or gets injured or whatever. Uh, same thing with, like, our original game, like, um, Root, you know, Edward made, you know, like, noises when he, like, jumped or dodged or whatever. Acting is easy, but your voice hurts after a while. Yeah, yeah, especially if you have like any kind of like grunts or like exasperations or like anything like where you're trying to convey that the the character is like putting forth like any kind of effort. Um, yeah, it, it can be kind of taxing on your voice to to do that without it like. just ruining your voice over time because you gotta get you you gotta just do take after take after take after take until you like eventually get the right one or get like one you can like spice together so grunts and taunts yeah 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 like that kind of stuff um can definitely um be rough on a voice right we need to adjust this texture scale I think this this arena is like mostly gonna be like that red grassy type we saw in that other scene, and then I'll like uh, carve some paths into it. Um, go back to red base. 
I'm going to adjust the texture scale a little bit. So we don't want too much of the dirt showing through, but we want that as like a nice base, right? And I'm just doing this like super, super quick because I just want like a general uh, vibe. This isn't like final pass or anything. I just kind of want to get a feel for uh, how this arena is probably going to look. Give it a little run around, see if it's like large enough. Yeah, this is like decent size. I can imagine like fighting a bunch of enemies in here, right? Um, especially if there's like rocks and you know, like other buildings and pillars like thrown in. You can only do good voice acting when no one's home. Yeah, yeah. Cause I do not want family hearing me cussing cause I don't cuss at all. Very understandable, um, and yelling in general. Yeah, yeah, Well, it's also just like a consideration thing. Like, you don't wanna like disturb the peace of the people around you. Um, and that, that'd that be like another problem for me, cause like the apartment I live in is like, the walls are paper thin, right? Like I, all day, every day, I hear my neighbors like 14 chihuahuas that they have. What I can only assume is stuffed in the insulation uh, with like how vividly I hear them. Um, but despite their like incessant yammering and just like little just like just like nails like tapping on the tile, I don't want to be like the type of neighbor who's gonna like disturb my neighbor, right? Because it's like it's not like they can control the yapping of their chihuahuas. Um, they could control the amount of chihuahuas they have, but. I don't really blame him. So, yeah, that would be another problem if I'm gonna do like any voice acting and just like having to scream or like do any weird voices. It's finding a window to do that without bothering my neighbor is gonna be like super hard because they all work like different shifts and like night shifts and day shifts. So, I don't know. Um, I think what we're probably going to do for McSpace Biff is more like a Zelda and like animal crossing classic style like bark where they just go woo, 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 just like just nonsense gobbledygook when you like talk to them and it'll just be based off of like the tone or vibe of what they're saying right and they're just whoa just weird little noises to just kind of get across an expression um i mean i would love to do voice acting and i have a couple like really talented friends who have like offered to do some voice acting for McSpace Biff or just any game whenever we do voice acting but uh, I just don't think it's in the cards for this one right because it's that's it's just that much more work to integrate where um, as opposed to like if you do like a pre-recorded list of barks uh, what you can do is when you're going through and like typing out the, the dialogue you can make like a note saying like this is this tone right um, and then you know, like, place that audio file and you can like pitch them up and down and it's like not as weird as you would like with a voice. Um, in fact, at one point I was making like an Animal Crossing style game just on my own, just like see if I could. And um, I had like a, like an audio bark generator based off of like the vowels that the text was reading out. Um, and that worked pretty good, but it 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 felt way too Animal Crossing to like put in any other style of game. Um, and I think probably like a happy medium for like voice acting in a lot of like indie games is probably just doing like you know Zelda style barks, right? I think that's like pretty good because it gets across the tone, you know, it gives the character personality, but you don't have to re-record lines for every text dialogue that you have in the game and you also don't have to worry about um localization as much when it comes to like uh you know redubbing those voices you can just 
swap out the text and it still gets the same vibe and tone across for uh, all all different sorts of people of all different languages. I think that's pretty cool. You have all your voice lines written down where they respond to. Oh, wow. I can only imagine how many that are. Yeah, we, um, we're kind of saving that stuff for last, right? Like we're, we're so busy working out like the mechanics and everything. We have like the story arc of Mick Space Biff more or less worked out. Um, but a lot of Mick Space Biff is like very improv -y. So it's based off of kind of like how the level ends up feeling and the type of character we put in it is going to determine the lines that they say. We've got like a couple like funny, funny lines like planned out, um, especially for like the vertical slice. Um, but we don't have like a, a bunch of stuff written down at the moment just because um, to be honest writing dialogue is like one of the easier bits of game development now in terms of like um, just like actually integrating it writing good dialogue's hard though I mean People don't get enough credit for it. That's for sure. Oh, man. <coughs> One unsaved. Wow. Yeah, that's the level. But that was like the other level we were working on. Let's see, do I want that, or is it, yeah, no, it's that one. Actually, you know what, it might not be. I want to use these as like, pillars I can like jump on. Yeah, that's what I was saying is like, uh, writing good dialogue is, you know, if you have a knack for it, it's easy. Um, especially compared to other aspects of like game development, right? Because it's, it's pretty straightforward. It's either, it's either good or it's not. Um, there's like not a lot that can go wrong with it. You know, like bad dialogue isn't going to break your game and like cause it to crash it might you know make people go I don't, I don't like that that wasn't very good or kind of cringe at it but um you know it can't break your game so that's one nice thing about dialogue Especially if you have a knack for it, it's pretty fun. Um, I like to think some of the stuff I've written has been like pretty okay or pretty funny. But um, again, you know, I'm going to be a little bit biased towards my own stuff. So, you know, hard to say. It's like I, li like, I like to think I'm like pretty good at it, but... That's just a me opinion. When you're good at making insults, you make some good combat dialogue. That's true. That's true. If like, uh, if your character or uh, the enemies are like the type of uh, characters like hurl insults back and forth, that I'm sure that can be like pretty pretty fun to like write. Um, kind of like an Uncharted style thing where it's like Nathan Drake or honestly like a lot of like PlayStation games so like Uncharted like or Spider-Man are perfect examples of uh, kind of both the enemies and the protagonist like hurling insults back and forth um, honestly Naughty Dog games in general minus you know like The Last of Us um, 
had some like pretty fun and quippy stuff. Man, speaking of Naughty Dog, man, when are you when are you guys gonna give us Jack Four, man? Like, I was like looking at like some of the uh, gameplay and stuff from like Jack Three the other day, just on like a nostalgia trip because it's something I played so much as a kid. And man, I like. Ratchet and Clank got all these like next gen releases and you know you get all these like remasters for things like Spyro and stuff. But I feel like Jack like a, a like a proper Jack 4 game would just go so hard right now. But um I think they're working on like a like an online Last of Us style game now. I remember that being like announced like a year or two ago. I don't know. I'd be interested to see like how that works because so funny enough like the last of us when it came out um was it the last of us on uncharted one of them had like a pretty interesting like multiplayer it's like pretty niche but i remember like watching some clips of it and it it looking pretty interesting unfortunately i didn't have a playstation 3 uh when those games came out um and i was like super late to the uh, party when it came to like getting a PlayStation 4. Like I, I got a PlayStation 4 like three years ago. Um, so it was like already on the way out. That said, I got to enjoy some PlayStation 4 bangers like um, Horizon. That game was like super good. Um, I think, unfortunately, Horizon Zero Dawn kind of got overshadowed a lot by um, the launch of um, Zelda Breath of the Wild. Just because everyone was, like, so obsessed with the freedom of the sandbox mechanics. But in general, I kind of think the, the open world design of Horizon Zero Dawn was kind of better than Breath of the Wild. And also, uh, the story of... Uh, Horizon Zero Dawn was way more interesting than um, Breath of the Wild, right? Which, to be fair, I don't think Breath of the Wild was like trying to do anything like crazy innovative um, when it came out. When it came to like story, because they were just like so focused on like sandbox mechanics and dungeons and everything, they did such an excellent job of like building the type of world and game that you could like fire up like. And just like come back to and like try out different ideas right but horizon zero dawn like the the story was like super bleak but really interesting um and it's a shame like i heard that like the sequel wasn't quite as good right and to be honest like the way the first one ended uh I, I didn't really see like a lot of room to go with right like anything was gonna feel like more or less a repeat of the first one um, and the stakes would just not feel as high right well 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 what do we have here <laughs> welcome to the stream man um uh, you just caught me going on a rant about Naughty Dog and like PlayStation games and uh, specifically Horizon Zero Dawn. Talking about how it kind of got overshadowed a little bit by uh, Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, which again, such an excellent game, but um, kind of controversial opinion. I think overall, um, the original Horizon is a better game, maybe? I don't know, because, okay, mechanically, Tears of the Kingdom uh, trumps it, right? Like, the sandbox is just incredible, but Tears of the Kingdom felt like it was, like, an unfinished idea, right? And, uh, no, sorry, not Tears of the Kingdom, Breath of the Wild felt like an unfinished idea. And Breath of the Wild, like, foundationally was like super super good mechanically for building two tiers of the kingdom but when it came out the the campaign felt very lackluster and one of the big things i've liked about the zelda games in the past was 
the world and the characters and like the stakes and everything that's going on and i felt like they foregoed a lot of that to focus on the sandbox which is which is fine right uh but personally i kind of thought that breath of the wild was somewhere between like maybe a seven and an eight out of ten and people just like people treated it like it was like the best thing since like sliced bread and I, you know it was good but i don't think it was like that good right because there's other elements to a game and i just felt the story was kind of lackluster Man, we're gonna we're gonna end up like garnering so much hate. I mean, yesterday Will was talking about how Kojima games like aren't that fun, and now I'm talking about how Breath of the Wild is like <laughs> not not a perfect game. I'm man, don't get me wrong. Uh, I loved that game, but I felt like. Tears of the Kingdom was what they probably wanted Breath of the Wild to be. And they just didn't want it to be like stuck in development hell forever. So they just kind of put uh, Breath of the Wild out um, before they could add everything, right? And that happens with games all the time. And to be honest, um, you know, it's better to have an imperfect game out that actually exists instead of you know a perfect game that is just being worked on forever and is never released really really good example is uh beyond good and evil 2 i mean that game was announced over a decade ago at this point and it's essentially feeling like vaporware and I think they just tried to do too much too quickly too soon uh, in terms of like mechanic and scale and everything without like really considering like would that be a good evolution for the game or like would it just be better to make something of a similar scale to the first game with like updated graphics right um beyond good and evil was so innovative for when it came out in terms of just like all the variety of mechanics and just like scale and graphically like it was like super super good and just an interesting concept right characters were cool world was unique but um you know trying to live up to your own hype sometimes can it, i see it kill studios all the time and i would rather have like an imperfect version of a game versus like this unattainable thing that they're never going to be able to release because it's never going to be good enough. <laughs> I heard that when Kojima watched Will short, he ran through his house smashing his Lego sets. Oh man. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. We love, uh, we love Kojima, dude. I mean, at least I do. Um, I do have a tendency to agree with Will a little bit, though. Um, like, and I, the, I'm someone who, like, 100%ed Death Stranding, right? I loved that game. Um, but Death Stranding, from, like, a standard point of view, is not what you would consider, like, a fun game, right? Like, especially the beginning of that game, where a lot of the... Um, mechanics haven't been introduced yet and it's like it's really really slow right i want to say like in the second third of that game the it, it kind of like picks up steam a little bit but you know will had a very valid criticism he's he's someone who does not have a lot of time um and like just now getting into it you know he works a full-time job he's a game dev and he's also a father and a husband you you can't you can't gamble 30 hours on a game to see if it's gonna like pick up right so i think his criticism you know they're perfectly valid where it's like you play a game it's like mechanically it's not that fun but the world's interesting you know, sometimes you are just better off like watching a montage on YouTube, but you know, you don't want to do that either because then you're not 
supporting the guy who made the game. So it kind of puts you in like a really weird spot. Yeah, cutscenes with gameplay. And I, I think that's been like a criticism for Kojima since like Metal Gear Solid, right? Like the original. Um, well, not the original, right? Because the original was... Um, I don't remember the name. I think it was just like Metal Gear on the Famicom. I think it was the Famicom. Um, so funny enough, um, with that original version of Metal Gear that Kojima worked on, um, it it was not meant to be a stealth game. So when Kojima originally designed uh, Metal Gear, like the very, very first one, like the top down, like NES Famicom style one, uh, I think it was supposed to be like an action, like brawler type game or just like an action shooter game. But the hardware of the Famicom um, couldn't run the game fast enough to like play the game the way they intended. Uh, so it was like super, super slow in terms of like movement and everything. So they ended up like opting to change like the general behavior of the game itself to make it more stealth based because it could like play slower and it feel okay. So we ended up, we, we got an entire genre due to hardware limitations, which is insane. Um, so that's like a classic like artists uh, using the limitation of the technology or uh, just what they have at their disposal to to make something like really interesting and unique, right? So I always thought that was like really, really cool. Yeah, it was valid cutscenes with gameplay. A game shouldn't be that. Yeah, and, and that was kind of like one of my biggest issues. One of my biggest issues with a lot of the games that were coming out in like the mid 2000s was um, they, they felt like they were trying too hard to be movies, right? Especially like David Cage games, right? Like um, Heavy Rain or like Beyond Two Souls. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to sit there and like mash buttons, right? Just to like watch a movie. And yeah, like a, a good recent example is uh, Beyond Human, which I think is also a David Cage game. Maybe I'm just like hating on David Cage, which I don't mean to because like the concepts are always like really interesting, but I kind of like my games to have a little bit of gameplay. Maybe that's a little like controversial, but I don't know. It's like if I want to watch a movie, I'll watch a movie. Um, I think a good balance is like kind of what uh, Naughty Dog does where the games do have gameplay but they like present well as uh, watchable entertainment right or just uh, kind of like new PlayStation games in general like uh, the God of War games uh, Spider-Man pretty good um, those types of like third person like over the shoulder games with like a lot of flashy like cinematics and stuff uh, but, like, still leaves you in control, like, 80% of the time, I think that's, like, the best balance, but, I mean, with, like, Metal Gear Solid 4, uh, that game was mostly cutscene, and, um, I kind of actually enjoyed, like, the, the combat and the mechanics of Metal Gear Solid 4, to be honest, and, like, I actually really liked, uh, Metal Gear Solid 5, like, a lot of, like, the movements and mechanics in that game felt like really snappy and clean. And uh, that was a game that kind of like paired back the cutscenes a little bit. Uh, just because of like the open world element, they couldn't do them as much. And that, as a result, might be my favorite Kojima game, actually. something where I couldn't finish because I could not make level design very well so I was stuck for months trying to figure it out and gave up on it and figured it out later by making arena maps arena maps are easier to make than a level where you go from beginning to yeah yeah absolutely as someone who 
you know, spent years and years and years uh, primarily working on uh, arena style and multiplayer shooter type maps, it was a difficult transition to kind of, you know, start thinking about spaces in terms of fighting enemies and not being a space that gets revisited much, right? So, yeah, I, I can see why that would be like a, a hang-up for a lot of developers, because it was a hang-up for me for the longest time. The OG Metal Gear games had some pretty sick mechanics. The idea of using your cigarette smoke to reveal lasers was great. Yeah! Yeah, dude. I, I want to say, like, Kojima has a really creative mind when it comes to, like, doing interesting sandboxy things. Um, but when it came, especially to, like, the early games, um, and, again, you gotta, like, give him props for, like, when it came out and the systems it came out on, um, but a lot of the early games just mechanically were, uh, not fun, but interesting mechanically, um, I think Kojima's strong suit is like character design, world design, and story. And then, you know, throwing interesting sandbox ideas into that. But like interesting, quirky things that you come across occasionally, that's not like the core of a game, right? Like I, I kind of want my moment to moment gameplay to be somewhat engaging. Um, and I think that's why a lot of people were kind of really upset about Death Stranding because it was coming from Metal Gear Solid 5, which was like super snappy. Um, and then essentially, you know, kind of becoming a walking simulator. Um, and you can kind of see um, those criticisms show up in Death Stranding 2, right? Like all of a sudden there's enemies with guns now and you know there's more variety in environments and there's like more ways to like move around and you know it kind of seems like you know they took those criticisms to heart and they're going to you know improve on the general sandbox experience and the moment to moment gameplay so i really admire him for like you know like actually taking all that feedback and working it into the next game to make a better experience and you know, they did update that game after it was out too to like make some improvements, like adding like you know like the carts and um, I forget what they're called, but it's kind of like a boost pack or whatever. But yeah, it's always good for uh, developers to like listen to the feedback of their community. But um, I also kind of feel like developers, you know should reserve the right to ignore that feedback because at the end of the day it's their game um but yeah if it's just a good idea they should probably implement it to me half-life one and two did cutscenes the best yeah yeah excellent excellent point you know um allowing players to kind of just like experience the cutscene you know, seamlessly without, you know, ripping, ripping you out of it entirely is, uh, such a cool concept, right? Like think about like everything that happened up to that point where it's just, you know, it's playing a movie. Um, it's like a pre-rendered cutscene. Then all of a sudden, like you're in a cutscene and you still have some agency. Talk about like streamlining immersion, man. Like that's crazy. Like, you know, Barney's talking to me, and meanwhile, I'm, like, running around and, like, throwing Coke cans at people's heads. Super funny. <laughs> Games with gameplay, what is this? Communist China? No, this is the Soviet Union, man. No, no communist China here. Half-Life 1 and 2 just allows you to mess around while the cutscene's playing with them, which is much more fun. Yeah, exactly. It's more fun to, like, you know, if someone, like, really wants to, like, focus in on the cutscene, they can they can still be Gordon Freeman, right? Or, 
you know, just hanging back and like watching it unfold. But, you know, if you've done it a million times, yeah, maybe you, uh, maybe you try and bring a gnome through a whole level and set it up on a table during a cutscene. Yeah, I definitely agree with you, and great thing to see them taking those criticisms seriously it may actually give the best version of Death Stranding. Yeah! Death Stranding would have been an absolute incredible movie. I stand by that. Well, I mean, to be honest, it, it was an incredible movie. Like, that game was... It was so heavy with cutscenes and, like, actual, you know, movie-level actors. Um... I'm excited to see what they do with Death Stranding 2. Like, even just from, like, uh, quick glances at just, like, the trailers and stuff. Um, it does seem like they generally improved, uh, like, the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay, right? Which was kind of my only complaint about Death Stranding. Like, I loved the world. I loved the idea of using, uh, basically, hell as, like a fast 3d printing internet <laughs> like that's such a that's such a cool concept right like using the like afterlife to like instantly transmit data um and then you know the consequences of that so overall super cool game but yeah the criticism still stand it's like to the average person it's just not that fun and I think that's fine you know I think we had someone comment on like our TikTok saying like it's an acquired taste it's just like you know that's true to an extent but um, some tastes to some people just can't be acquired like it's what it's it's what the hell divers guys said a game for everyone is a game for no one. So, you know, you gotta respect people like Kojima going out of their way to, like, make games that are, like, inherently, like, a little rough around the edges to, like, the average person. Like, kind of abrasive in terms of just what it's trying to do in order to, like, try something new. And, you know, a lot of people aren't gonna like it. And that's fine. You know, we still have all of our Halos and Call of Duties and Fortnites and the types of games that, like, most everyone can play. But, you know, I think it's good to, like, have some kind of artsy avant-garde stuff out there, too, right? Games that are, like, not afraid to be a little abrasive. Um... Messing around with a mini teleporter in Half-Life 2 while they talk about the plot. And then you're like, okay, what am I supposed to do again? <laughs> yeah, dude. It was just like, I'm just like hitting buttons and like knocking like... <laughs> the entirety of all the cutscenes in Half-Life 2 just felt like me being like a cat on a table. Just like pawing at like a mug while like the owner is like trying to tell me. He's just like, no, 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 no. It's, it's dinner time. Okay, go, go. We put the dish down go eat dinner and you're just like and they're like no no hey hey pay attention and you're just like huh what what was i doing again oh i'm trying to i i, I gotta go find alex okay <laughs> but yeah real-time cutscenes are awesome said that in Half-Life 1 anniversary doc that while people were watching the opening tram ride people would nudge their mouses on accident and freak out that it was still alive yeah yeah because uh, that was like one of the first games uh, at least like a large commercial game to like have an interactive cutscene uh, they just weren't expecting to be able to control their character in something that like seemed that cinematic and now to be fair in hindsight that tram ride is way too long, right? I get that they were impressive to like be able to show off this entire level streamed, but that tram ride takes like five minutes. Like it, it felt like actually going to work, which, you know, not a bad, 
precedent to set for like Gordon Freeman who just feels like he's going for another day in the office but me as a player I don't want to feel like I'm commuting to work man like I already have to commute to work well not anymore I work remotely now I, now I have like a really tough commute from my bed all the way to my office and you know sometimes sometimes on rough days it does take as long as that tram ride at the beginning of half-life one you know sometimes you just gotta like put on your slippers and army crawl your way to your desk we need people pushing the envelope don't worry the level will tell you exactly what to do <laughs> I think I want to do like some more elevation changes. I need like a, a nice little like stand in grub to like see in this level for just like context scale. Another great thing about Half Life 1 and 2 is no NPC is invisible. Invincible! Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just being able to like whack the crap out of everybody and just, they just die. Very funny. I'm with the science team. Ah! Just <laughs> crowbarring them to death. Man, I really want to work remote, but I'm sick of pretending like I don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I gotta be honest. Remote work is so dope, but it's it it does kind of drain on you mentally after a while um especially if you're like an extrovert thankfully i'm not an extrovert i'm like a ambivert so i like kind of flip flop on that scale but um if you're used to like getting a lot of your like social interactions from like the office uh you're gonna you're gonna start to feel like really isolated um it depends what kind of company you're at though because like a lot of companies have like a lot of meetings throughout the day and you know if you're attending those and you know they're cordial and like personable people you won't feel as you know alone and isolated but you know virtual communication is no no replacement for the real thing right like um and something that happens a lot with remote workers is uh if they have a tendency to isolate, they're going to isolate even more. So, um, you gotta make sure you, like, have some hobbies and friends and, like, things to do outside of that remote work. Because otherwise, you just kind of turn into Gollum from Lord of the Rings and, uh, you know, your computer turns into the ring and it's, you start looking more and more disheveled every day and uh, until you eventually forget how to talk to people. It's not no good. What am I working on a level right now? Yeah, so um, what I'm working on right now is essentially kind of like a terrarium. Um, I was thinking there would be like this like basically area of the level where um, the Soviet science team, the science team um, was just kind of observing grubs, right? Uh, kind of like tracking their behaviors, you know, seeing if they could like potentially use them in any way whether it be like you know for their meat or uh train them to be like essentially attack dogs or like sniffing dogs um or if they could like you know take their brains and cybernetically implant them and into robots of some kind but um yeah this would be like the area they like observe them in um and i was saying earlier uh, it's gonna be like this classic thing from like, uh, you know, like horror games like Resident Evil where it's like These scientists have like taken these creatures and like put them in You know these like terribly inhumane circumstances and like, experimented on them It's just like I I took 20 grubs and I put them in a 10 by 10 foot room and I did nothing but blare polka music and then prod them with electric sticks all day long 24 7 for two months surely nothing bad will happen of this 
And then, you know, the next log is like, they all escaped and they killed everybody. So it's gonna be like one of those situations. Yes, instant of a little grub boy. Yeah, we want like little, little guys just kind of like hobbling around for, for scale. Shouldn't be too much longer. Will's been making some crazy good progress on, um, on the grub. Yeah. We're gonna have a new enemy. Not too much longer. I mean, their like behaviors aren't gonna be like super, super crazy. To be honest, they can probably reuse a lot of like the, the AI from the moon bot. They'll just need like new sets of animations and stuff. Of course we'll need um, mechanics for them like burrowing and like coming back up, but uh, just for like quick out of the box stuff um, for like quick testing, we could probably just give them like a running animation and like an attack animation and you know, start working from there. Hello Gordon, bang. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's like all of Fallout, uh, Half-Life 1, right? Just like. Like, why are these, why are these scientists eyeing me like that? Is it because I put their mug in a microwave? Hmm. I don't, I don't, I don't like the cut of their jib. Guess who gets a crowbar to the face? Whack. You can do without the office social interactions. Just fine. Yeah. Yeah. Go in remote. I mean... Especially, yeah, like I worked in an office, right, for a long time, uh, very like standard corpo office, and so many of the days just felt like office space, right? And it's just like, mm, it sounds like someone's got a case of the Mondays. It's just like I will burn this building to the ground. It's like I don't want to be here, and you you don't do your job, and you make my job harder, and then you're like being smarmy about it. That's a lot of nerve. That's a lot of nerve, Karen. And then it's just like people being like really super fake and then, you know, like just boot look, like just boot licking the CEO. It's just like, dude, that guy just barely knows you exist. Like he's going to lay you off the second, like the number dips down. Right. So you might as well, like not even have to pretend to be friendly with him. Um, and obviously this isn't like all companies like um but like my last one was like it it kind of felt like that to a degree so going remote was like oh yay now i don't have to pretend that said um i was i'm still like friends with a lot of people that i used to work with um at my old company cuz they're like super chill and like super dope people um but you know I'm an adult now with like basically no time. So it's not like I get to really see those people anyway, which is sad because I do miss hanging out with them. But it's like I can either I can either do game development, potentially work on my dream. Um and you know go see my girlfriend on the weekends and you know, friends I've been friends with since I was like six. Or I can, you know, try and foster those other uh, relationships. And, you know, I just don't have the time. And it's sad, but I, I feel like that's also part of, like, growing up. Like, you just have less and less time. So your circle gets smaller and smaller and smaller. It's like, it's good to, like, try and keep in contact with those people. But uh, me in the past, I, I always felt, like, like, guilty, right? Like I Like, I felt, like, obligated to, like give everyone my time and I think that was like a super unhealthy mindset right because I didn't I I ended up like not having any time for myself and I was like stretched like a stretch Armstrong in just every different direction to the point where I was like starting to tear at the seams um, and it's like those people didn't expect that of me right but it was like a self pro projection and um, it, it wasn't very bright um, what's that old saying? It's like, you don't set yourself on fire to keep someone else warm. So, 
So that said, I think um, maintaining, you know, healthy relationships with friends is uh, very, very important. Like, you know, hobbies are all well and good, but um, they shouldn't take precedence over like actually living your life. You love the terrarium idea. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I'm thinking, um, what's cool about it is you can have like a lot of like elevation changes and stuff in here too. Right now it's like super flat, but, um, it's also just visual variety in the level. You know, the problem with like a dungeon is no matter like how interesting you like make the turns and changes, it eventually just kind of feels the same, right? That was like a huge problem with like the original Dooms um, is, you know, the level design, the level design was like super cool and interesting, but it just kind of felt samey after a while. And obviously like, don't get mad at me for like, you know, criticizing a 30 year old game. Um, but there's like a lot of games now where they still try and like recapture that feeling. And I'm just not like a super huge fan of like, Feeling like I'm a mouse trapped in a maze. Gordon doesn't need to hear all this. He's a highly trained professional and then you see Gordon hides a kite. <laughs> yeah. Tuesday? More like Monday part two, am I right? No. No, you are not right, Deborah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Jeez. Yeah, well said. Well said. Yeah. Yeah, it's important to like balance everything. You don't set yourself on fire to keep someone else warm. When you said that, I thought of the ending of Dark Souls 1. Oh, dude. Yeah, good call out. Yeah. The entirety of Dark Souls is basically just like, am I going to keep this awful thing going at the, the cost of like myself, right? And, um,. Dark Souls 3 like finally kind of like completes that cycle where it's like okay the world's burnt out and there's like literally no reason to keep this going because you're on like how many cycles of the world but yeah yeah it just kind of goes to show it's just like it doesn't work hmm I think we're going to make the middle part bigger. So do you think there's maybe like some poor scientists who when went in to feed the grubs or give them meds that just got stuck at the top of a tree? That's very funny. Um, so we kind of already have um, something like that planned for the standard overworld, right? Um, you're going to come across a guy who got like, man, that's, that's really funny. Cause we have that exact thing planned out already where, um, this guy in like, uh, in an area got like stuck on top of like a cliff because grubs like surrounded him. And, uh, he, <laughs> the idea is at some point. Uh, one of the like colonists who is like on his pilgrimage to the uh, the learning center uh, like passes under him right and uh, he uh, like calls out to him for like help and you know the the stupid NPC thinks of it as like the uh the wisdom from the sky is like calling him and prodding him to like keep moving forward right so the guy just ends up like getting stuck up there and starving to death but yeah the idea is like uh this other guy like made a pilgrimage i forget what why but like to go get like a code or something to like i think break into the soviet facility first like he was like the first guy they sent because he was like a guy of like moderate intelligence 
um, and he got like swarmed by grubs and um, he like climbed these like series of like crates to get to somewhere high and then like the bridge between the two areas like broke and now he was just like stuck up there um, yeah it's it's always very funny like find someone who is just like stuck in a predicament You know what? I think we just actually just go way, way taller here. Like have it be like it's on like like plateau. something but I don't know what yeah I'll, I'll take a look It's hard to say without seeing them in the context of the rest of your um, your roster, right? I kind of really like the guy with the minigun. That that guy's pretty cool. You could maybe use like a helmet of some kind, though. Mm. I don't know, having a... Bandana's pretty cool, actually. Yeah, I don't know. Um... I would say at least for that like imp type character, your uh, the model is like very top heavy in terms of like detail. Like there's like um, it's like all like up here, right? You could probably give them like knee pads or like shoes or something. I don't know. That type of character design isn't really my area of expertise. To be honest, I'm I'm barely okay at designing my own characters. We talking last time, or maybe the time before that, about in a single barrier, it requires at least two of three things, each in their own area. Whether they are keys, a part of a fixed door to open, or y'all still think of that? Because I would see it as being like one of those, like one of the grubs got a hold of a piece and ran into this room. Also random aside, but this terrain brush automatically creates collision as well. Is the mesh right? It just occurred to me that all you're doing is painting and then running around on it. Um, so there's there's actually two segments of um, landscaping. So uh, what you do is you uh, build a landscape mesh, right? And uh, let me see if I can show the, the wireframe of it. So this is the, the actual wireframe and you can, you know, adjust the law detail, right? So like the further away you get, like the lower, lower poly it is. Um, because this is like a kind of small level and will be mostly indoors, we can actually afford to like have it be semi dense, but I still try and keep it like as low poly as I possibly can uh, without it like really uh, affecting the gameplay too bad. Uh, just because I, I'm trying to optimize this the best I can, right? Like it's not gonna run on a Switch, but you know, maybe an Xbox One or something uh, would be nice. But um, yeah. So to comment on the first thing, uh, yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to have it kind of be like a key card system, similar to like Root, where you need like two or three things to like break into the next area. Um, essentially like the final like boss area of this level um, 
and there's gonna be like four or five options, right? Or, or it could just be three different areas. That that might end up being like what I do, because again, I don't want this like vertical slice like dragging on too much. Um, because it's like I want this to be like the type of thing someone could play at like a convention. Um, and it not be like too, too long. Because that was a big problem with um, Denizen is like the demo was just like it took over an hour to play through the prototype of that game. And like at that point, it's like there are games that are less than an hour long. Um, so that was like. Again, we wanted to like show the breadth of Denizen and like all the concepts and everything. And it was built more as like a full publisher pitch where we could take like slices of it and show it off. Um, but as a result, we didn't like have a very tight demo that we could like have just like re regular people play. Um, that said, I could probably just have this be the demo and just ignore the overworld, but I don't know, something about like exploring it in open world area is so cool. So, I don't know. Anyway, um, so how the terrain brush works. So you take the landscape and there's uh, two different segments, right? There's the sculpt and then there's the paint. So the sculpt, you have a couple different options. So you can do like flatten, right? You can do a uh, sculpt where you can like pull it up or uh, push it down. Uh, you can do things like erosion, which is like super, super cool. You know, you can affect the, the noise and it will essentially simulate erosion on it. Super smart. Um, let me like go back and you can like lower, make the, the scale like really, really small or like really, really big. And then you also have things like alpha brushes where you can do like even finer detail. Um, I don't do that kind of stuff on these passes just because it doesn't make a lot of sense. You can also do stuff like hydro where it like does it based off of like how water would like wear it down. Very, very cool stuff. I don't know why I just did all that because uh, I probably can't undo it enough to, to roll it back. Chances are it's also gonna freeze the stream. It did not, okay, good. But um, yeah, then you can go to paint and essentially what you do is um, you build out a uh, landscape material, right? And that could be, what I've done is I've built out this like landscape uh, material blueprint where it has all these like different layers, right? It has like all these like texture details. And I can pick between um, all the different like levels that I want to paint, right? And I can make this like as long as I want. I could add like 20, 30 more textures. Um, these are all textures like we've authored and like made in house. Um, like, uh, this one is actually kind of a, uh, one from, uh, Denizen, just more like stylized, right? So that one's one we've had for a while, but, um, all these textures we've, we've made now. So anyway, um, so the landscape is using this global landscape material. So then I come over into the paint and there's all these layers over here that you can assign to layer information from that blueprint, right? Um, so you'd have to like, well, I'm not gonna show you like how to build it out right now, but basically it's got like all these different layers that I built and I can, you know, switch between, like if I wanted to add like, grass I can do that right but yeah this is like one of the main reasons we wanted to um, come over to Unreal um, it, it might be different in unity now but uh, when we were working 
essentially the landscape material um, in unity had three channels so you could have like three different textures and that, it just wasn't enough right um, and the blending was like not super good it, it was like kind of sharp and jaggedy so um, what we were doing for the longest time was uh, I'll, get, I'll pull up an example right here I was having to um, build all the levels uh, in Blender and then like assign materials and do um, different uh, like texture painting between because uh, I could only do like three different types of um, textures what I would do is I would like model and sculpt these like different pieces of terrain because uh, it's like like for example like this I would want this to be like a road right but uh, this material already had like three different types of things so if i wanted like a different type of texture i'd like sculpt this whole different area and um yeah it was just like not not a great way to do things i mean it worked but yeah i would not go back to this um funny enough i think we're actually planning on um putting this level because because it's like that old way of doing things. I think we're planning on putting this level, since originally this was gonna be a firefight level, into uh, deadlock. So put like, you know, those like deadlock shaders on it and have it be a wave defense type thing. You like the idea of technically not needing all the key cards to progress. So there's like still stuff you can see a new one. Yeah, yeah, I, I like that too. Um, and I'm thinking of like having like multiple ways into like all these areas, right? So at least like two ways to like break into here and like just different ways to run around it and experience it. So yeah. Um, Yeah, I was trying to think of a way where you could like make one of them like necessary and then like the other is like optional, right? So maybe we could do something like uh, there's like a primary key card, like a secondary key card, and there's like only like one primary, right? Because inherently some areas are just going to be like better designed than others or uh, more interesting visually. And because I want people to kind of experience certain bits, um, so that there's like at least a guaranteed level of variety, that might be the way to do it, right? So you do something like uh, you get a primary key card and a secondary key card and the there's only one primary and it could be like in here and then there could be like three secondary key cards right and you only need like two of them to progress that can be pretty cool you have to think about like how we would program that uh, that yeah they, that would be like crazy complicated to do um it is more work than just making them like pick three out of five but for the sake of um just finding them i think it would be worth it that's what you've been doing building levels in blender yeah i mean it, it to be honest it works like it's it's a fast way to iterate on stuff depending on the type of level you want to make right um we're wanting to do a lot of like terrain stuff though um and unreal's like terrain system is just it's just good right i will say uh the one advantage of doing something like uh 
that old style is you can have these like more insane types of mountain geometries where there's like overhangs and stuff <coughs> and like booleans like cutting through them um but thing is like if i wanted if i definitely wanted that i could just do this anyway right so you might as well like use the the train sculpt system and then integrate something like that uh just because it's like more rapid iteration the less time you take going back and forth between programs especially when it comes to level design uh the better right that's again that's the whole reason we built like these like predefined snap kit systems it's just super super rapid uh iteration on like level shape without having to like you know go into blender build it out test it and then come back into the engine for scale um that was another thing that kind of sucked about unity is there was no way to like drop into the level and test it you would like have to You'd have to drag in your like player where you wanted it to, to like go. You couldn't just hit like start and have your player drop in whatever. Um, now to be fair, we've had to do some custom stuff where uh, McSpace Piff can do this and it work with like co-op and everything. But um, Blender, not Blender, uh, Unreal does just have the mannequin that you can just like drop in and just like start running around and testing scale. I like that idea a lot. Similar to the voice access key quest and pray, right? There's a primary means to getting the voice, but then an incredibly secondary means that it comes from the cook quest. And it's something. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's fast for outside levels, but buildings are hard for Blender. At least it is for me. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, again, um, there's no right or wrong way to like, Kind of do anything when it comes to game design, right? Uh, so you just gotta find like what works for you. Um, this is this is something we've found that works for us after years of like trial and error and like trying you know all these like different methods, but might not be for everybody, right? And it depends on the type of game you're making, um, because we're doing like kind of wide open uh, organic areas and then more so tight um, building interiors this is just what works for us but yeah I don't know what do you think they're feeding these grubs I think um, that's a good question me personally I think uh, they're feeding the grubs people they couldn't convert hmm like the people who like held out against like the Soviet conversion, I think those get uh, turned into grub chum. Cause it's like, yeah. Right, right. So originally they would have been like feeding them like uh, colonists, right? And probably just other grubs um, and like plant life and whatever. Um, because the grubs are omnivores. Like, they'll they'll eat, like, sap and goop and foliage and whatever. Um, but, yeah, like, it's a, it's a two-for-one where it's, like, you know, there are some people who are just going to be able to hold out against <laughs> uh, the, like, brainwashing longer than other people. And, then ra and rather than, like, invest more time into, like, trying to brainwash them, just feed them to the grubs, man. Why not? Yeah, this room is, is going to be, like, completely taken over, right? Um, and as a result, grubs have kind of, like, broken into, like, different parts of the facility. Like, they were originally being contained in here, but there's going to be, like, holes in the walls and stuff. And also, it's just, like, yeah, imagine, like, trying to hold a burrowing um, type of animal uh, in an area with, like, open ground underneath, right? Like, there isn't tile and stuff under this. They just got, like... Yeah, 
You have a blender question. Do you know an easy way to navigate the camera when you're working on the inside of a building? Yes, actually. Um, hold on one second. Let me show you. So um, Blender has this really cool um, first person controller. And it's a really great way to like, kind of get like perspective. It's not like an actual first person controller, but it's like, kind of like um, a good way to like test scale and stuff. So you can adjust the speed that the camera pans using the mouse wheel, scrolling up for faster, down for slower. Uh, how to activate this is you hit shift and F and then it kind of puts this in like this like first person targeting mode. And that's how you can kind of like pan around, right? And if you hit space, it'll uh, jump to uh, the geometry that's like on your screen. So if you want to like snap over here, you just hit space. Um, and then I use this to like kind of pan around stuff slowly, right? And then when you're done, you just either tab back or um, you just left click and, and there you are. It's like a better way of like being able to like pan around look at stuff. Um, I've found that's like super useful for building like interior areas. So hope that answers your question. Shift and F. Yep. I like that. The strong ones get given to the grubs. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like they need to be doing something that neutralizes the grubs growth, right? Like the last thing they need is one burrowing out of the ground and growing into a full ass sandworm. So maybe they've been spiking their food with something or there's a frequency being emitted from to keep them from growing. Uh, well, my thoughts was they just like kill them before they get too big, right? Um, which, you know, it seemed fine at first and it was like working, right? Because the grubs like breed and populate pretty quickly. Um, but that was like over time the... Um, the like sandworm, the like, the mama, the mama sandworm that they got like a lot of these grubs from, uh, started like hearing their like cries and screams from them killing them. And that's like the thing that like started bashing this uh, facility apart, right? And I'm thinking you'll even like hear that throughout the level, right? Like you may not see the, the giant sandworm, but um you like walk into areas and like the whole facility will like shake uh and like sand and everything will like come through and you'll hear like the groan and like creaking of things because it's like trying to break them out of the facility um yeah there could also be like an anti-grub frequency um similar to like the the pile drivers uh for the ant lions and like half-life that could be a thing. Um, and that could be like a cool mechanic that you could like turn them on and they, they would like not approach a certain area, right? Uh, could be a combination of those two things. That should make put my camera at a better spot when we're done. Yeah, yeah, it's but. It's, uh, it's been like super helpful for me over the years, um, especially considering um, <coughs> excuse me, the entirety of um, Root, our first game was made in Blender, right? These are... Well, not the not the entirety but like the the core of the level like all the walls and everything so being able to have a way to like navigate through everything was like super important and that helped me a lot so hopefully it will you now you just need to figure out how to make 
outfit variants later for your NPCs. Yeah, yeah. What I was gonna say is like I wouldn't worry so much about like uh, if they're like uniform or uh, clothes or whatever or like perfect. I would just like get them into the game and like start testing them. Um, Cause it's like our NPCs, they're not finalized, right? Like this guy is definitely gonna have uh, different variants and varieties of like his like outfit and stuff. But it was better to like, you know, get him into the game then just wait until he's perfect. Hmm. That might be too much of a incline. I kind of want this to be like a two-tiered arena. Um, brush the eyes. Let's make it smaller. I'm going to make it smaller. Wow, that is uh, not strong enough. Oop, too strong, too strong. Oh man. Oh yeah, by the way, um, I don't know if Will talked about this as much, but um, the good news is we are definitely getting our game IPs back. Um, we paid for them from our old publisher and uh, they talked to Valve and it is in the process of transferring over. So pretty soon we'll finally own the rights to our game again, which is pretty cool. We're even thinking about, you know, Firing the old Unity back up and finally being able to make that uh, update to Deadlock that we've wanted to make for, oh, I don't know, eight years, something like that. So, once we uh, finish this uh, vertical slice of Mixed Space Piff, that is, because uh, going back into eight year old spaghetti code and trying to debunk it for a game that is in early access and has like. 20 people looking at it uh, doesn't make as much sense as like finishing this like vertical slice right because you know it's hard to find the time to work on something when you're not going to make any money off of it and you don't really have a C sharp programmer anymore Woo, congrats. Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, it's 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 feel good. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, for the longest time, it, you know. Um, it's just like a nice little like point of pride to like get it fully back under our control, right? Where we can decide, you know, do we want to do any sequels? Do we want to, you know, finish the game? Uh... Do we like do we want to finish deadlock and like add these updates it's like do we want to you know potentially do some stuff for root and you know once it's finally back in our control 100 percent we can kind of start figuring out what we want to do right um that said mixed space piff is still our priority right now because i think more people are uh excited about mixed space piff than deadlock which makes sense because i mean deadlock is deadlock was a fun game and to be honest deadlock was like a full experience of like what we intended it to be um i mean it was a wave defense game similar to space pirate trainer we just wanted a we were like you know jeez i think we were teenagers at the time we we're gonna no we were like 20 um basically teenagers um but we were just like a couple guys who just wanted to make a you know a vr wave defense game that had some neon stylings and kind of reminded us of tron and you know we did it we wanted to uh do 
thumbstick movement and do like a campaign. Um, but uh, at the time, everyone was like complaining about it making them motion sick. Like we even put like a prototype out uh, in the game where people could like move through like a combat course and like um, shoot pop-up targets using like the thumbstick movements. And every, like everyone who tested it said it like made them like like so physically ill and that we should not do it and we're like okay well that's kind of what we wanted to do so i guess we're not going to do it and we're just kind of gonna leave uh deadlock as it is until we can think of like a proper way to kind of uh do a better version of the wave defense right but for the longest time it just kind of felt like other games did it better so anyway we're gonna come back to it make uh make some levels and add some guns and stuff if we if we ever get the time yeah yeah um root would be super fun to do a little dlc for in fact um ian and i uh before he passed um uh, we're working on some root dlc um uh yeah yeah we were like working on like a couple different levels and like some new mechanics and stuff but um i don't know maybe we'll maybe we'll do it someday uh to be honest it makes more sense just to make a sequel than do like dlc because no one's gonna see that dlc um especially with like the way steam works you get like for for games you get these things called visibility rounds um you get like five of them right and basically it ensures that your game gets like a certain number of views um you know like kind of put it on like the front page and they kind of changed that um it, it's not like as effective anymore but you still get them but root has burnt through all of its visibility rounds and it did it ages ago so um, the only people who would see the DLC are people who have root currently which again we have no idea um, we're hoping to get that data from our publisher um, along with like the financial reports and stuff um, they have to hit a button during the transfer to allow us to like view the number of sales and everything and we're still waiting to hear back from them on confirmation if they're gonna do that so um anyway i don't think we're gonna do uh root dlc um the order of importance is definitely um cat makes space piff then deadlock a little bit if we have some time and can degunk someone else's code uh, basically we have to learn C sharp to do it. Um, and then even then like the code is like kind of messy and then it's like working on like an, an old, old version of unity and the, like the VR like integration for steam isn't super good on that version. So we'll see. Um, but yeah, we would sooner do uh root two than like root DLC. I'm so effing excited for you guys. Well, thanks, man. Yeah, it's 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 a good feeling. Um, again, it's not it's not there yet, but uh, supposedly it's in the process of being like transferred over. Um, I think it's in Valve's hands now. <laughs> it's interesting if they're gonna say anything uh, in the process of like transferring it over, because it might bring. Uh, the attention to the fact that there is another game called Deadlock out there that isn't isn't uh, the game they're making so that could be interesting I doubt it though uh, considering there's all there's already another game called Deadlock and it's like a puzzle game uh, and it's like spelled different so yeah I don't know anyway Super exciting stuff. It's just going to be nice to have it back. And uh, finally, finally start making some money off of those games. Because uh, 
once they're once they're back in us uh, any profits from then on we're gonna go straight to our wallets so that's gonna feel pretty good even if it's like a dollar or two it's gonna <laughs> gonna feel nice to like start seeing some money coming in from the games we made hope you're gonna go for now thanks for the help on blender see you for now yeah no worries man thanks for hanging out uh glad i could help that's like you know half the reason i do these streams is just like give tips and just like advice to like other people uh working on games and stuff right because i mean just because i struggled for years to figure out stuff doesn't mean doesn't mean you have to so let my uh let my misfortune be your fortune Shoot, I didn't even think about that part. What part? The the part about like us uh, finally finally able to like start making money off of our game? Or <laughs> you're gonna be repping the shit out of it. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, I can like you know, I can wholeheartedly recommend that people buy the game now. Um also something that I'm kinda considering is just like lowering probably lowering the price of the game like the default price because um i mean i think it's a good game and i enjoy it but ten dollars is a little steep so maybe dropping it to like seven or five bucks especially like for people who are in areas of the world that you know 10 american dollars is like a lot of money um and you know i want I'm not so much worried about making a bunch of money off a of root. I just want people to like enjoy it. So we'll see. Oh, the part about deadlock with Valve. Yeah, yeah. It's it's like something I that kind of only like just occurred to me is like, oh man, you know, we might like because they have to approve it, and it's a game called Deadlock, and they're getting ready to do a big push on their game deadlock i imagine unless it's like a placeholder name but i i don't think it would be um like the only the only time they've ever really had like a a big name change for like one of their games was um narbicular drop which ended up being portal um but that's because narbicular drop was like like a student project at the time, right? Before it like got refined into Portal. It was just like the mechanics of the Portal. So I don't think they're gonna change their name, um, especially considering they own the platform Deadlocks on. If anything, we would probably have to change our name. Um, I, they'll probably be fine though, because yeah, I don't know. It's interesting, we'll see. Um, it's not like there haven't been two different games with different names before. Pray and pray. Literally, literally, absolutely the same, minus the capitalization. So, I don't know. I do not know. Um, I do know uh, that right now uh, people do not understand that our game is not Valve's game because every day I open up uh, Steam, I see like 10 more discussions in the deadlock forums going please invite me to play deadlock alpha and i'm just like i don't know what to tell you man i don't have access to the deadlock alpha i have the access to our deadlock alpha and uh mm, yeah. dude the student project version of portal is awesome yeah dude it's crazy like the uh aesthetically it's like kind of interesting too like they had like these like weird like demon faces for like the portals uh, but conceptually portal is like a thousand percent there right so that is that is another example of like something that kind of like started out is like almost like a game jam type project and ended up being like one of the best games like ever um in terms of just like groundbreaking new mechanic portal is like just one of those like undefeated champs right it's just so different from everything else that um 
that anything that were was like going to try and copy it just couldn't right not without being like a blatant portal clone only game that like kind of comes to mind that kind of implemented portal mechanics is Splitgate which Splitgate was dope but um that was more like people trying to mash genres together instead of like coming up with like something like brand new which I'm not I'm not like faulting them for it it's like a super cool concept and to be honest that's like um, how like some of the best games are made is like mashing different genres together um, but yeah, I can't really think of anything that like comes close to Portal in terms of like just a groundbreaking new mechanic. It looked like a Bowser's Castle level. Yeah, it did look like a Bowser's Castle level. Like even the faces kind of look like Bowser a little bit. Straight up, one of the best games ever in the second one too, in my opinion. Uh. The writing was beyond good. Yeah, dude. Uh, it's it's one of those few um, cases where both the first and second game are like one of the greatest games of all time, right? Because um, to introduce co-op, um, it had like all those like extra co-op puzzles. But even just like the campaign was just hilarious right like cave johnson is such a good character wheatley's fantastic uh glados is fantastic it's like such a small cast but it's like super super tight uh and they introduced just enough new mechanics where it like felt like a brand new game right like all the like different goos uh and like all the lasers and yeah it was just super good and then like the change in variety right like that's a good example of like what i was talking about like you know the first portal like it was short enough to where it didn't feel like the environments were too samey but if it had gone on of like all those same types of environments in the second game it would have felt very very like mouse in a maze type scenario but they managed to like uh spice up the environments a lot and just add in like all these like different areas also like the rat man is like one of my favorite easter eggs in any game uh it's just like the guy like all these like scrawlings like on the walls and like the secret areas talking about like just like how twisted and awful uh aperture is and it's like alluding to like the fact that glados is evil and you're trapped before the like true introduction Honestly, such a good game. Valve, you know, you know, they're the goats for a reason, right? Like, they consistently put out quality stuff. Eric Wolpaw is a god. Yeah, dude. Yeah, you're right. They really spice it up between two. That's what I'm saying. It's like, you know, they have, like, the overgrown segment. But the, the, like, opening scene where you're, like, in the fabricated house and it's, like, falling apart and everything is incredible. Um, oh, and it, it, it has... It has one of the best endings ever, right? Like, they... They, they talked about it in an interview. They were, like, trying to figure out a way to, like... Uh work their way backwards right where they wanted um the ending to happen because you shoot a portal on the moon and then they like reworked that retroactively into being like the portals like have moon dust on them and that's like why you're able to conduct the portal on them and you know they even tied it like further into the uh into the game where uh you know it like essentially bankrupted uh, Aperture Science because Cave Johnson just wanted it despite like not having the money or 
ability or anything. And due to all the the moon dust, he ends up like getting like woefully and like dreadfully sick. And uh Yeah, he ends up like dying because well not dying, uh if you've played the um Steam Deck version where you like <laughs> you build the toilets uh, with uh, I forget the name of the, uh, the the little sphere, but it's it's uh, comedian Nate Bargatze, uh, and it's he's just super funny, like that deadpan comedy. Um, but yeah, you like <laughs> you build all these like shooting toilets and stuff, and uh, you eventually meet Cape Johnson at the end, and he's like trapped in like a like a like a head I think it was like Steam Deck no it wasn't Steam Deck exclusive but it was just like built for the Steam Deck that's right you're right you really have you read watched the comic about that guy's journey no I haven't be interested to see that Valve documentaries are so cool dude like I mean, they put out, like, one of my favorite games in the recent years, which was Half-Life Alex. Half-Life Alex was, like, what VR uh, should be, right? And obviously, it's still limited by, like, the... Limited by the technology of their time. Um, but it, it does everything as well as you can. And it's, like, an actual legit game instead of just, like, a tech demo. World 2 is one of the best tutorial sections alongside Prey. They simulate you having brain damage by lying about but what the buttons do. Yeah. yeah, 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 A to speak, and then you just like hop, and it's like, no, 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 that's, um, uh, nope, that's, so you just jump there, as you jumped. Talk. No, okay, you know, that's, <laughs> it's just like, oh my gosh, dude. I'll send that to you. It's about the man's crawl. All I know it's behind the walls. Oh, dude, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Send me that. Uh, I'd love to give that a watch. But yeah, uh, Prey, Prey has like one of the biggest mind trips of any game ever, right? Like the, when you finally like smash the window and you find out like you're in a simulation. Uh, and it's... Oh man, I don't want to spoil anything, but uh, for those who haven't played Prey, they essentially tell you the end of the game in the first area. That's all I'll say about that. Um, but it's it's one of the best like tutorial intros and probably one of the best uh, endings to any like sandbox RPG I've ever played. Prey, 10 out of 10 game, highly recommend. Uh, if you like, you know, uh, art deco sci-fi or just interesting worlds or RPGs or or just good games in general, you know? I mean, Prey's, Prey's one of the goats, which again, why it's so sad to see Arcane close. <sighs> RIP to my boys. At least the Hi-Fi Rush studio got picked up. Speaking of old Arcane though, Wolf Eye Studios got that Alpha coming out soon. I know, I know I'm Sim Cook is, is uh, in the raffle for it. I'm thinking about adding myself. Um, I don't really have a lot of time to like you know, be playing other people's games, but man, that would that would be like worth streaming, I think. Just like because their their level design is always so top notch, right? And their art is like crazy. Weird West was like such a cool game, um, and you get a, like a lot of that old arcane overflow from games like Dishonored and, and Prey and stuff. So I am very excited to see what they do. 
yeah, absolutely 10 out of 10 ending. Yeah, Prey was, man, it, it's been a long time since I was, like, genuinely impressed and, like, didn't see an ending coming, right? Um, definitely recommend it if you can run it. It is, it is worth a playthrough, right? Especially considering, like, how much player agency it gives for, like, how crazy detailed that world is. Dude, I have to because we have to talk about... Okay, okay. So, Prey at this point is a seven-year-old game. You know, spoiler warning coming up, but... Um, Essentially, um, the intro of Prey is, you know, you're you're going through these like simulations over and over and over. Uh, you're like in an office, like just checking things. They're like checking your memory, and they like make you do these like tests, right? Um, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Did you mean um, talk about? Yeah, sign up for Wolf Eye's new game so we can talk about it playing. Okay, yeah, I gotcha. Yeah, in that case, I will not talk about the Prey spoilers. Even though it is, you know, seven-year-old game and you should have played it by now. But uh, on the off chance anyone here is going to play it, um, I will not spoil anything because... Man, it is it is worth a playthrough, and the ending uh, is very very cool. Honestly, the whole game throughout very very cool. But yeah, um, yeah, I think I'll sign up for uh, Wolf Eye's new game. Yeah, your your messages are a little delayed. Um, I wouldn't worry about it though. I'll just uh, I'll bite my tongue for now. Let's see, what do I want to do? I want to add some grass. Where's grass? Is this the right kind? Um, let's see, what kind of grass do I want this to be? Uh, oh no, this was the right kind. All right, density all the way up. Wow, look at all that, look at all that grass. Um, no, I don't want to paint on static meshes, I want it be on the ground I threw it on the ground that ain't my dad this is a cell phone I'm slowly dying of brain rot very wavy how the grass is just very listfully waving very mindful very demure oh god i am dying of brain rot um this all needs to die actually it's too tall it's too tall boy that sure is some neat grass wow wowie zowie this is some neat grass um, yeah, I like it. I made it myself. I planted every seedlings. Just like you have planted your seed in the ground, I will plant my seed in you. You know what that is a quote from? You have watched way too much Netflix. It's from The Office. Um, that might be the right height. Yeah, yeah. Like, crouch. 
Because it's like I don't want you. Like it's not like hiding grass. It's just like cover the ground grass. Now the nice thing about this like not being like a giant open world, I can probably crank the grass density up. That not like destroy people's computers, right? Um Let's go up to a thousand. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, you know what? It's probably not showing um, the full the grass because I'm not painting it in cinematic cinematic foliage quality. So generally, what I'll do is I'll just like cover all the ground with grass, right, and then just. Uh, I'll pair it back from there. I'm thinking this will probably have uh, a glass ceiling. So this will totally, will this totally be enclosed or will there be a glass wall or ceiling letting light in? I'm thinking, I'm thinking this is gonna be uh, a nice, ceiling type situation where the glass is like you know just like beaming down like uh because it's like a terrarium right um i'm thinking it's not actually going to be like sunlight it's just going to be like fake light pumped in troop sir is this how to become a elite gamer dev stream absolutely my guy this is this is uh this is where all the cool kids are hanging out i mean you you see you see any other devs uh you know passing the grass around like this i don't think so i don't think so this is how you become elite kids don't do drugs stay in school um i think this is looking pretty good in terms of grass density Wow, I'm frolicking. Look, I'm frolicking. So much frolic, so much wow, so much roll, so much now. This is what the kids want. Fields of grass, touching my ass. Grazing my inner thigh. Okay, we're gonna stop that now. Ew. It's like sticking out of shadow a little bit. Look at how Space Bet frolics. Very cutesy. Very demure. I don't know if you were here earlier, but I made that joke like 20 minutes ago and um, complained that I was dying of brain rot. So. I'm sorry to give you your diagnosis, but you are also terminally ill. Um, terminally ill from being chronically online. Terminally online, rip me. Yeah. 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 I'm. I'm sorry. I hate to be the one to break it to you, but um, yeah, there's no cure, right? Other than like throwing your phone in a river and then moving into the woods with a dog and then uh you know just living off the land that's how you that's that's the only cure for being terminally online right you'll never touch grass <laughs> i can't make you boy if you're gonna play my game you're gonna be touching some grass okay it's good for you. It's like Popeye when eating his spinach. It's gonna make you stronger. No. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. I won't make you touch the grass.
Yeah, so what I do a lot of times, uh, once I've like thoroughly just stuffed a scene full of grass to the point where my computer sounds like a uh, 747 taking off, uh, I will then go back through and like start carving like these like paths, right? Ooh, that is not what I want to do. I want to. What? What? Hold on. Uh, oh, hold on. What is wrong? What am I doing wrong here? Um. Oh, yeah. It, I'm using the uh, erase density wrong. Look at me being a silly goose. Um, now we're going to crank this up, actually. Hmm. Yeah, what I'll do is I'll, I'll like, go back and, like, carp some paths and stuff. Just, like, types of areas that I think, uh, people or, like, wildlife would, like, kind of meander through. I'm gonna clean up this this old grub terrarium here. And then uh, after I've like cleared these pads what I'll do is I'll go back through with like a lower paint density for the foliage and then uh, kind of like sprinkle some some stuff in this isn't looking too bad though even just with like the eraser so we'll see right um, generally I would wait until later to um, put all the grass and stuff but considering um, I'm doing this level design on stream. I want it to look pretty for y'all. That way you can uh, just gaze at the grass and pretend you're in a Ghibli film, right? Just soaking in that sunshine, frolicking in a field, listening to some chill lo-fi beats. Let's see. Oh, kill these real quick. Because they wouldn't be touching that edge there. Um, another thing I do um, a lot is. Oops. Hold that thought. Hold that thought. Hold that thought. A lot of times what I'll do is, uh, is this right here where I will sculpt down the path, right? Um, and this is before I go back over with like a dirt texture, but, um, like the type of area to be like walked and treaded through a lot will generally have like a little bit of like an indentation and this like helps you know give it like a more authentic feel right it's like water would erode a pathway more if there is like less foliage holding on to it Best viewers are no blah 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 blah. Yeah, no. Um, my best viewers are right here in the chat already. So we do not want your spam. We do not care. Yeah. 
we're going to, uh... We're going to ignore that comment. I really need to set up, um, moderation at some point. Yeah, I'm Tim Cook. I, you are 100% correct. The best viewers are, in fact, not on there. Because they are already here, baby. That's right. Best viewers are the ones that you've got right next to you. Nobody topping my viewers. We the we, we the best, as um as a wise DJ would once once say. Yeah, of course, of course, y'all are y'all are the best. You're you're here even when it's boring and there's not a lot to look at. Also, the conversation is always good. They'll always have something interesting to say. All right. I think I'm going to do like a quick little, little landscape mesh paint. And then I think... We're gonna do a little run through real quick, see how it feels. I think that might be it for the evening. We're, we're reaching like a good, good stopping point. go smaller and again this isn't like something I would do uh, this early normally right I just kind of want to give an idea of like my general process subtractive it is subtractive I don't know if I want that actually um, nah. oh, whatever. we're gonna go over it again anyway Obviously, like this is like you know, super rough, but gives like a little more variety. Um, we're actually gonna do raise density, crank it up pretty high. I don't like any of them like directly on the path, right? Towards the edges is fine, but like in the like dirt part itself doesn't look as good.
one more like little little smoothing pass because this got like all like warbled and everything okay not looking terrible And then you'd put like more rocks and stuff and everything here. But... Kind of gives an idea of like, you know, where things were like treading and walking and stuff. Obviously, this is like a super, super fast pass. But overall, you know, not a bad like little start for like our little terrarium den, right? That looks super cool. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, I'll probably put like some little like burrow caves and uh, nests and stuff uh, once we have like some proper trees I'll drop some trees in this level um, and you know like more rocks and uh, like bridges and just general stuff but this is I think this is like not a bad little like arena to fight some grubs in um, yeah I'm digging it. It's not a bad, like, little little break from uh, the dungeon. The dungeon. Yes, I think. I think this is looking very nice. Very, very nice. Can I jump up here? I want you to be able to. <laughs> Oops. Ooh, there we go. B E A. Beautiful. All right. Well, this is a nice little start for the next area that we'll work on. This has been a super fun stream. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out. It's always a good time. Um,. Will's going to be working on the grub a little bit more tomorrow, and hopefully soon enough, we'll be able to have that guy running around this little arena. Um, once he finishes them off, he'll probably build a rig for him, and then I'll do uh, some animations and stuff, and we'll implement them into the uh, the overall McSpace Biff roster. Yeah, yeah, I really, I really do think the the whole thing is kind of coming together pretty well, right? getting a lot of variety and like the different types of environments um, obviously like a lot of the textures and materials and everything are, are still kind of like not set up right but it's feeling pretty good there's a lot of variety in like architecture and stuff and overall super super happy with how everything's turning out and um, yeah looking forward to uh seeing what will works on tomorrow and then uh hopefully soon enough you know we'll actually get to fight this guy and show him off for real anyway thanks everybody for hanging out super good time as always see you next time <laughs>